Ciao, ciao, ciao. God, my hair is a mess. But can you see how healthy my hair is, to be honest, considering that I just cut it? It's, it's thick, it's full, I don't use excessive styling, the edges are absolutely healthy. This is what I'm talking about, healthy hair. And, and So, ciao guys and welcome back to Lampis. So excited to be here with you today. Probably wondering why is my hair looking so messed up like this. Okay, let's, let me just be honest. It's one of those early is away Saturday and I wanted to film some, something by myself. And I thought I have enough time because I'm going to style my hair and so on. Nothing really turned out the way I wanted because I thought I could just put the hair in a, in a bun. But they are too short to fit in a bun. So I ended up like this. With the yeah, so this video is about how to prevent breakage and maintain length when it comes to Afro 4C hair. You're probably wondering why do I always talk about 4C because that's my hair texture and I can only share with you things that I've experienced or that I do to my own hair reasons why your hair is not growing as fast as healthy as you want it to grow Microphone. yes let's start with um number one moisture when it comes to moisturization we've talked about this a lot bit of everybody afro hair whatever texture you have you want to keep it very moisturized you want to keep it healthy and long and you want to keep it growing fast one of the best way to do that is moisturizing now when it comes to moisture this it can also be negative depending on how you are doing it. If you are applying a lot of heavy conditioners directly onto your hair scalps, that just clogs the pores. You're never going to wash it off. So when I apply my moisture, I don't put it directly, excuse me, when I apply my heavy conditioners, especially the deep conditioners, and also any normal conditioner, I don't put it on the hair scalp. I just put it somewhere around here and then wash it off very well otherwise i use the light ones and make sure important just make sure that you clean the product off from your hair very very well if you leave which is most likely to happen when you're using heavy conditioners and you apply them directly on your scalp if you leave that on your hair it prevents the pores the scalp from breathing stops circulation and definitely is going to be stopping hair growth or reduce the rate at which the hair is growing. Another thing is how long do you moisturize? How are you doing the moisturization? For light conditioners I use, let me say about 15 minutes. For deep conditioner I would use about 20 to 25, even though most of them say 15, I use 20 to 25 with a, with a plastic cap. I don't do a lot of deep, to be honest. I don't do a lot of deep conditioner because I'm a little bit impatient when it comes to time. But if you are doing that and you're doing it a lot, do not keep it more than an hour. Most of these products are only recommended for 15 minutes. Excess ago is 15, I would say deep conditioner, honestly, 20 to 25 or 30 minutes for me, that's maximum. Then the normal conditioner, I'll keep it between 10 and 15 because I feel it's afro hair. I need to moisturize a little bit more, but I think more than an hour is just too much, too much. The next point, protective styles. You know me, if you have been following me for a while, I don't do a lot of protective style. I stick mainly to two or three strand twist when my hair is not too short. When it's this, this length, I would do corn rolls or flat twist, two, three or four. Um, and when I want to do something complex, I would go for Senegalese twist. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Or no, let me call them box braids or Senegalese twist. Now, and this too can be very detrimental. I will leave some pictures here, but I've seen some people do the twist or the braids very, very, very tight. It's like you're pinching your skin very, very tight in a negative way. And they include every little, even that, you see, almost direct, it's not even on the hair anymore. It's like directly on the skin. It's so bad, it's so negative. It's not good for your hair, it's not good for you because I think it's very painful. Then it's kind of 
if you see some of this protective style really damage the edges like you see your your hair is going to start somewhere here or your face is going to go up to here because you have uprooted basically uprooted your hair from the roots using this so-called protective style hair when i do my box braid i only go to people that are that don't do don't touch my baby hair if you touch especially the area around here on my hair i'm out of your salon there's a list of dangerous chemicals that we have to watch out that you don't have or you're not applying those things to your hair sulfate a lot of condition no shampoos have sulfate and this is very bad because it just dry out our hair and our hair is already naturally dry so you don't want anything any shampoo that you use to wash your hair and you make it super uh, super dry terrible you can't anymore work manage the hair to put it in twist after that so get rid of sulfate containing shampoos another thing that you should watch out for is actually um alcohol there are also several shampoos with alcohol and i think that also just reduce it's good as if you're going to a party chill with your friends yeah but for your hair mm, or for disinfecting your skin yeah for your hair and it reduces the natural moisture content of the hair and our hair away from apart from alcohol and sulfate parabens very common in cosmetic products and several products like scrubs and so on also some shampoos have this but they are not good at the moment or oh, a few years ago they're now being uh, so questionable for carcinogenity so you also don't want that that in your product and just get away you know just there are several shampoos that don't have parabens look for something that doesn't have parabens that doesn't have sulfate that doesn't have alcohol and that's not even everything there's a whole list of different things to watch out for mm. <laughs> this one i'm also sometimes probably good just get away from dangerous tools now when i say dangerous tool, you're probably wondering yeah i'm not using screwdrivers i'm not using i don't know yeah but there's some just simple hair normal hair tool stuff that i think they are very dangerous if you're growing 4c hair and this might cause excessive breakage i will tell you i will show you a few that i have also in my i still have this which i think is very dangerous this is the fine tooth comb super super dangerous if i just take even a small strand of my hair here if i take this it won't it it will never this thing will never go through my hair even though i just come it do never so this is a no-no you're probably wondering why do i keep this <laughs> it has this so for making lines like this this is what i use but if it's just for combing the hair now or maybe sometime i'll use it a little bit on my edges just to make sure that they are in order and that's it another dangerous hair product that i have this i've never used <laughs> this on my afro but I used it a lot when I when I had relaxed hair and it worked very well in the relaxed hair. Oh, something <laughs> is this hair straightener. This one goes up to I think 190 degrees. It's it's yeah. If you can just I don't know if you can see. I'll try. Can you see? It's pretty much brand new. I bought this when I I bought this when I had already started my Afro journey. And you're probably wondering why, guys, I'm human. Sometimes I also get tempted. Uh, I was really, hmm, hmm. I wanted to straighten my hair and avoid it. I was like, it's not bad. And I, because I saw some YouTube videos that uh, you can also use a hair straightener on your hair as long as you don't heat it up very much. So this, a hair straightener, uh, any all this uh, heating iron that I showed you or a fine comb, it's not good for your hair but guys just do not go to bed with your hair uncovered now if, what is the big deal because I think on its own if you just if I just go to bed like this I wouldn't lose my hair overnight you get what I'm saying but the problem is really what this leads to when you wake up your hair is like matted it's tangled all that it might on a Monday morning if you go on a Sunday evening to bed without covering your hair on a Monday morning you're so much tempted to use one of these dangerous tools I just showed you on your hair because you want to style your hair as fast as possible to go to work 
if you just rather put it in twist, put on a bonnet and go to sleep, you wake up, no dangerous tool, hair is easy to style and you're ready to go to work. And that's what I do. Just make sure that you cover your hair before you go to sleep. Best, and I, this I've tried it best with something that is satin lined, like a bonnet or a satin head scarf. Some tips online also say use a satin pillowcase. I haven't tried that one, but I don't know. Maybe it works. I don't even know why people find satin pillowcases. I haven't seen them in so long. Like in the market where, uh, in the, like when I go to the normal shop where I get my bed sheets, I don't find any satin pillowcases. They're just normal cotton ones. But apparently satin one might also work. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please give me a like or give us a like, even though Bubuccino is not here at the moment. Subscribe to our channel. Most important guys, leave a comment in the description below. The question for today, the question for today is how do you prevent breakage when you're growing your hair? I want to hear from you. How do you do that? Maybe I can learn a thing or two from you. Maybe I also say some things that do some people just don't work at all. So I'd like to hear that and also learn a thing. Learn something, you know.